Morning everybody. So, we got a new project that I uh, got a call on yesterday. So this is a camshaft out of a very custom high performance, I'd say it's a Chevy big block, but there's very little Chevy actually about it. Um, the block is a custom aftermarket block. I think few internal components are all that's actually Chevy. Heads, block, everything is just crazy custom. So as you can see, this is a uh, high performance roller cam. This is actually in a uh, twin engine uh, salt flats racing rig that I forget what class they're racing in, but they're aiming to set some world land speed records with this thing. So anyways, the issue is they had an oil leak. They tore it down to chase the oil leak and discovered that their cam sprocket was in the process of coming off and that it had sheared off this hardened dowel pin in here. That's a problem. Now, I got the phone call to see if I had any way of getting that out of there and my suggestion was that they take this thing to somebody that had uh, a sinker EDM and could, you know, erode that out of there. But they couldn't find anybody that had one or had time available right now to deal with it. So we're going to my backup plan, which is I'm going to try dropping in there with a carbide smaller. That's a quarter inch to so drop down to a three sixteenths or something. Um, either end mill or drill. We'll see what I got in my collection. Um, I've never tried drilling out a dowel pin before. In all honesty, I don't know if it's doable. I hit one with a file and like could barely scratch it. So, I mean, we're talking, what, north of 60 Rockwell or something, which is what you'd expect. Now, what I also don't know is if the center of them is any softer. Um, it does almost look like from the way it broke, like they might be a case hardened with not quite as hard of a center. But at any rate... We're going to give it a whirl. I originally was intending to set it up over here on the horizontal boring mill. Um, and you can see I still got to tear down from that last project. But then it occurred to me that for what I'm doing, the uh, radial drill was just as good and probably a little bit quicker to set up and try it with what I'm doing here. So, Because here, I just, I've got this aluminum uh, V-block that I got I don't remember where. So that's good because I don't want to scuff up journals. I was originally going to put copper in my normal V-blocks and I remembered I had that. And I've measured, by the way, and verified these journals are the same diameter. Some camshafts, the journals reduce in size as they go down the cam. makes them easier to put in and out. But this one, they happen to be the same size. So at any rate, I'm going to get this thing clamped up here and get centered up on that hole. And then we're going to have a whirl at carving our way through there and see if it'll do it or not. So I'll bring you along for the ride. Okay, so we're all clamped up here. I'm not clamping these very tight i don't want to risk you know torquing this uh, cam now one thing i got going for me i don't really know what the purpose of this was i got it in a uh, auction buy but it's actually a hand scraped v-block and i've checked it out but it is really dead true and straight which in this instance is very nice to know that i'm you know really grabbing this thing delicately but firmly with it being aluminum so then you can see i've got some uh copper sheet underneath my clamp so that we don't uh, mar up the bearing surfaces. The only thing I don't like about this is the fact that I've got so much cam sticking out past my support here. I'd rather be clamping here. That would be one advantage to the boring mill, but um, what I'm mostly worried about is harmonics and vibration while I'm trying to drill. Um, wrecking my carbide. Carbide doesn't appreciate that very much, but we'll see what it does. Um... <clears throat> If I have trouble with that, I might have to reconfigure this. But anyway, we're going to go find ourselves some tooling. I'm going to pull these out of here a minute. All right, so show you what my plan is. That dull pin is broke off just below the surface. So I went digging around. I have was woefully lacking in quarter-inch dull pins, but I found a stubby one. I wanted a longer one, but that was all I had shorty. So I'm putting that in there. I'm going to you know, turn the uh, radial arm drill loose and then feel my way to the center of that and then lock us down. And then I have a 3 16 carbide drill and we're gonna try taking the center out of that thing and see how it goes. So 
set you guys up and let you watch the party. guys, we carved right through there. I'm uh, quite pleased with the results. So that was just a pretty beat up uh, 3 8 ball nose. I don't know if you can see that. Anyway, it's got uh, one uh, cutting edge pretty chipped up on it already. But for what I was doing here, I was trying to find something to get the job done that wasn't super uh, valuable to me. So now, we're going to get this out of the road and we're going to see if we can get the shower that out of there. Alright, so you can see this uh, right here is the dowel pin hole. I'm going to get uh, chips blown out of there and then we're going to see if we can do an old trick with uh, some grease. So I'll let you guys watch for us.
see it's sticking up a little bit now. So I changed my mind. I was going to use grease, but this is a pretty slappy hole. And I remember an old timer telling me once that the cheapest white bread you could get your hands on all wadded up actually worked better. So you can see, we got our hunk of bread and he wasn't lying. I don't think I'd have got this one with grease. I, uh, my hole was too... See that? One dowel pin popped out with Wonder Bread. There she be. We got a successful uh, extraction. I just got to uh, clean the breadcrumbs out of the end of the cam and call the owner. I'm sure they'll be delighted. So. Just thought I'd add a little video here of uh, there's the remains of the hardened dowel pin and then uh, a nice hole without a hardened dowel pin in it. So. Anyway, that worked slick. I'm uh, kind of tickled to get an excuse to try that stunt. I've heard, uh, like I, said, I don't even remember where I heard it from, but that you could use white bread and that, you know, it basically turns into an extremely viscous fluid, if you want to call it that. You probably played with this stuff when you were a kid, too. Like, you don't want to eat your peanut butter and jelly sandwich and you start turning it into a dough ball. So anyways, it uh, worked dumb good. I would do that again in a heartbeat. And the advantage to it was that you know, I had, by the time I pecked and carved my way through there, you can see this wasn't like a precision hole through here by any means. And the problem is that I am certain grease would have just spit itself right back out around the punch. Whereas that bread, it wanted to do that, but I had to finally give it some authority and really smack it. But uh, that was enough to shock that thing out of there. So, Anyways, customers on their way to get it, and uh, hopefully this thing will be out at the Bonneville Salt Flats setting some world speed records here in the near future.